Hi guys, Tina here and welcome to my brand new tutorial about how to set up a very basic home recording studio. So I've meant to put together a video about how to do remote recording, how to do a home recording setup, um, and right now is actually the perfect time due to the COVID-19 crisis situation. Um, I've had a lot of friends and other musicians ask me about how to put together a recording setup so that you can possibly continue working uh, on projects and recording yourself from home for your own personal projects. So here I go. This again is a super, super basic. I'm assuming that you know absolutely zero um, about you know recording setups and whatnot. So I will just let you guys know what I used to start. Um, so the very first thing that you need is a computer of some sort. I am currently working on a iMac Pro. Before this iMac Pro, I had an iMac. Before that, I worked on a laptop. Uh, many different laptops, they were all Macs, uh, but a non-Mac also works, of course. Next, you are going to need a DAW, which stands for Digital Audio Workstation. It's just a fancy name for a program like uh, GarageBand or iPhoto or iMovie, just a program that you can edit and record in. So I actually started on GarageBand because it was free and it came with my Mac that I was using at the time. This was over 10 years ago. Uh, now I have since upgraded to Logic X, which for me is super simple to use. I also do know how to use Pro Tools, but I just prefer Logic. Uh, any program is fine. If you're really, really beginning and just you know playing around with stuff you can even use GarageBand that does work as well. The next thing that you need is something to connect your computer to a microphone. Um, so before we talk about the microphone I currently use an Apogee Duet and before the Apogee Duet I used a very I think it was maybe a $99 um, M audio uh, box, so some type of device that connects your signal from your instrument or your voice um, to the computer so that the computer can read it. The microphone that I used uh, for over 10 years, which I talked about a lot, you guys probably remember, oops, um, was this uh, Rode NT1000 beautiful little guy. I got him for I think about $300 at a Sam Ash uh, at a mall and he's been on so many different projects and my entire Game On album and all of my other 9, 10 albums that I self-recorded, they were all done with this. Um, and now I have since upgraded to uh, SE Electronics microphones, a variety of them. This one is the RNT mic, uh, which I absolutely love, but if you're just starting off, this is very, very affordable. Uh, it's something that I feel very comfortable suggesting to you guys because I've recorded vocals, violin, flute, random percussion instruments, cello, um, all, all kinds of stuff, guitar, bass, stand-up bass, uh, all with this microphone and I feel like it's worked pretty well. You can do so much in editing and adjusting of EQ levels. So yes, I would definitely recommend the Rode NT1000. Now that you have all the major components, what other accessories will you need? You will need a microphone stand. Now for a while when I was on tour, I actually just propped up that Rode microphone on a trash can. I use all kinds of weird objects to make it stand upright, but it's probably best to try to get a microphone, maybe from Amazon uh, if possible, a microphone stand. So I have a stand. This one I got from Amazon. It's the most basic stand. I think it was maybe $25. Um, this is a new uh, shield that I got also from SE Electronics, but there are many other ones available. Um, this is a, a part of a sound treatment situation. So right now, I'm in a relatively big, big room with very 20 foot tall ceilings, um, but because the ground is carpeted, it's a little bit reverberant, but actually not super, super reverberant. But I found, uh, depending on your room, if you're in a smaller room, that's actually better because there's less of a echoey situation going on. Um, and again, I've been recording professionally, remote recording for very big projects, blockbuster projects uh, from my home studio uh, in very, very small rooms in my bedroom in the past uh, with very little sound treatment or professional sound treatment. Um, I'm a big believer that whatever sounds good in the end is the best. It doesn't matter if you have fancy stuff or if you're using, you know, blankets and mattresses, all of which I've done, jackets, whatever you need to do to uh, maybe dampen the sound of your room a little bit. Um, and in this situation right now, I think that might be actually, you know, timely advice. So don't feel discouraged if uh, you can't afford or you can't find, you know, fancy foam panels or whatever. Just use whatever you can use. Um, and it 
definitely does work. So it does not matter what you're using as long as the result is good. Now, in order to connect your microphone to the interface, so again, I'm using the Apogee Duet, but to the device that connects to your computer, you need a microphone cable. This is a basic XLR cable. Um, there are a full variety of fancy ones, you know, basic ones. I started off with, again, another Amazon purchase. I don't even remember what the brand was. Just a very basic, um, it might've been Amazon basic, I'm not sure, but a basic XLR cable. So you plug that into the microphone and the other end goes into your interface. And then from the interface, the interface will come with whatever, you know, whatever connection it is that connects to your computer. So it goes microphone, XLR cable, interface, interface to the computer, and you are set to start recording. So for now, I will show you guys just the very basics of how to edit, how to record, how to import files from uh, a client, from a composer or producer, if you are working with somebody else. Um, so here we go. And one more thing that I realized I forgot to mention, which is very important, headphones. So I am currently using some headphones. I can't remember, sorry Yamaha, uh, what the model is called. Um, I did receive it as a gift, so thank you Yamaha. They're wonderful, I don't remember what they are. Um, so I'm using these. I've also used Sennheiser uh, headphones for a very long time, um, the open ear ones, which I actually surprisingly haven't had any issues with bleed, which is when you can hear the track um, if you're playing your headphones a little bit too loud, it kind of feeds into the microphone, but I actually haven't had any issues with that. Depending on the instrument that you're playing uh, or how how you sing or what you prefer, you might want to investigate different types of headphones. Uh, but again, if you're just starting, you can really just use you know any headphones that you might already have just to get kind of get used to it and to learn the system. Um, and if you can have a better view here, which I think you can see that my duet is right here. Um, this is actually, don't worry, this has nothing to do with anything. This is a label maker um, that I use to print out labels for merchandise orders normally. Um, and then these uh, Rocket actually studio speakers, I don't even use, they're kind of more just like decoration. I usually do my mixing um, either in my headphones for basic mixes or I go to you know another studio to do that. Um, so right now they're not even connected, but if you prefer to work um, and to listen to stuff uh, using speakers, you can also do that, but it's really not necessary um, and it's more common cost effective if you just start working in headphones. Um, also, if you are doing sessions for other people, usually, uh, I mean 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to want dry stems. A stem is just um, a, a, a single recording of yourself, so your part. Um, they're just going to want dry tracks anyway that's not mixed because the composer or the producer is going to do the mixing. Um, so it's really not necessary to have a crazy mix setup if what you're focused on um, is getting a good quality, clean uh, recording that's usable for a project. So let's go on and uh, move into the Logic program. I will move to a screenshot so you guys can see what I'm doing in the screen. Um, I hope this makes sense and that you find this helpful. Hi guys, welcome to my desktop screen. Okay, so let's say that you have installed Logic uh, Pro. So we're gonna open it, we're gonna go to new, because we're making a new session. All right, so you see this selection of uh, possibilities here. Software instrument is if you are playing, uh, say, a sampled instrument on a keyboard, uh, but we're not going to do that. For, for right now, we are going to assume that uh, you need to record maybe a violin, viola, cello, flute, whatever, um, <laughs> a voice, and so you're gonna go to audio. Now, depending on the interface that you have, some interfaces have multiple inputs. An input just means where the signal is put in, right? Um, so that would be the signal from your microphone. So we're going to go to, for me, uh, on my Apogee Duet, uh, there are only two inputs uh, and I'm using one microphone, so a mono recording, and I have it set on input one. Okay, and that is my default. Uh, for audio output, um, I, you know, I just leave it on output one plus two. I never change that. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but that's what I leave it on. Um, make sure that the monitoring is on. Monitoring means that you can hear yourself as you're recording and make sure to enable the recording so that you are actually able to record. Um, I already have my device. This is the interface, the, uh, Apogee Duet. I already have it installed. It's not difficult to install whatever interface it is that you need to connect to your computer. So uh, make sure you do that. 
So both the input and the output are on the uh, Apogee Duet. Uh, I have my headphones plugged directly into the Apogee unit. In the very front, there's a headphone jack. Uh, in all interfaces, there are headphone jacks, so you can just do that. Uh, how many num the number of tracks we're going to create? I usually just start with one. Um, when I get a uh, remote recording request, I usually do at least five or six takes, depending on um, what the project is. But I like to over uh, deliver, right? Under promise, over deliver. Maybe not under promise, but you know, make make a good promise, but over deliver. Um, so I usually start with just one. Uh, for now, I would recommend that you experiment with recording yourself before attempting to do any sessions just to make sure you know what's going on and you uh, get a good audio quality going before you start advertising your services. Um, and so say that you are recording a solo instrument. Uh, we are pretty much set here. Uh, so we have audio one. If you double click, you can rename it. Uh, let's call it la 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 la. Okay. Now, as you can see, now this is moving that's because my microphone is connected and everything is live see how that jumps okay um so there are a couple of different shortcuts this is a record button make sure you're record enabled that means it's on uh, and this is input monitoring so you can hear yourself in the headphones while you are singing or playing uh, for me I, I prefer that I don't know for whatever reason if you don't want to hear yourself in your headphones if you're using one ear or something like that you can turn it off just like that um, and then a shortcut also is to press the button R so if you press the button R that will also begin the recording so I'm going to press the R Okay, so we are now recording. As you can see up here, uh, there's some different options. Uh, this, since this is a very basic tutorial, I'm only gonna go over super general stuff. Everything that's more detailed, you can uh, find online. You could read the manual, which I think is always a good thing to do. People, for some reason, do not read manuals when it tells you everything you need to know. Um, so read a manual or watch other YouTube uh, tutorials on how to use Logic. There are tons and tons of them that go into great detail about different uh, specifics. Um, so up here, I think this is pretty basic. So say you want to see, uh, so beats and project, beats and project large, so it makes it bigger. So when you have it on this setting, you see where you're at. So this is a bar number, the beat, because right now I'm in four, four, right? So here would be beat two, beat three, beat four, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the tempo, if you just double click it, you can change it to say 95. So all I did was I double clicked and I typed it in. Uh, the time signature you can change here. So you just click on it and change. Uh, and then the key for whatever reason, if you wanna change that, uh, usually if you're only recording audio, it doesn't matter so much. Uh, I, don't, I don't use auto-tune or tune any of my recordings, but if you are um, playing around with different plugins and whatnot, it might be good to put in a particular key. Um, let me see, if you wanna do beats and time, here you can see exactly how long uh, a track is. So I'm just dragging this back and forth here so you can see. But I usually use uh, Beats and Project Large, just so you can see the bar number, where you are. Okay, so right now, I again, I don't have any EQ, I have no effects, I have nothing. This is just completely, you know, super plain. This little guy over here, it's like a little notepad, I find very useful. Sometimes composers or producers will send me notes. Here are some notes for Tina. Don't suck. <laughs> okay, sorry. So, uh, so you can you know copy and paste notes, la 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 la, uh, and then you can always you know refer to it if you forget or you need to look at some notes about certain ways that things should be played. Um, I actually don't offer remote viewing. That's where you can actually watch and listen to somebody playing live. Um, just because for me, it's a lot more time efficient uh, for me to just get the tracks uh, and the MIDI and whatever from the client and then I just record it and send the tracks back uh, on my own time. Um, and for all the sessions I've done for the last decade, I've never had an issue uh, doing it that way. Um, and then for any projects that really require, you know, uh, real time interaction, I do those in person. Um, okay. 
So next, let's say that a composer uh, sends you a MIDI track because MIDI is good. Uh, MIDI also has the usually the time uh, the time signatures, uh, the tempo embedded into it, which is super helpful if you have a track that has a lot of different tempos in it. So I'm just gonna drag this over. I've prepped uh, a MIDI file from actually my own solo album, but we'll just pretend for now. We're gonna double click it. Uh, don't close. Um, we are going to double click this. Oh, you know what? It opened a new session. So usually if you just open a MIDI file and open it in Logic, it will open a new session. So let's just do this, okay? Um, so say you open a MIDI um, file from, from somebody. Here, this is another way that you can open a new track. So the plus button, top left right here. Audio, remember, same thing. Okay, and we are going to make that our la 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 track okay all right so say let's see we have some solo cello here say we need to replace this part so i had a question from a friend earlier how do you turn this into sheet music because um sometimes i do receive sheet music sometimes all i get is midi so you double click on that in logic when you double click this fancy thing comes up piano roll which is reading the the piano roll on the midi but if you just press score it's super easy you guys so you click on it Da -da -da. So there we go. So it's right here. Um, and then you can see that. Now, how do you turn that into actual sheet music? Say that you want to uh, print it out or maybe have it on a different screen. So you press this button, that turns it into a page. And what I do, my little trick, I press Control P for print. I go to OK. I'm not actually going to print this. So under PDF here, open in preview. Ta da the music's there. It might be sometimes MIDI, well, actually not sometimes, most of the time MIDI looks a little funky, but we're gonna use our super musician power brains to try to figure out exactly what it means. Um, because if you are turning MIDI into sheet music, it's not going to be perfect. It hasn't been, you know, professionally orchestrated or whatnot, which is totally fine. It's not necessary. Um, so just listen to the reference track uh, and there you go. So that's a very easy way to turn MIDI into sheet music. So um, let me try to think, what else? Oh, metronome settings. So right over here, if you have this click down, the one, two, three, four, that is a pre-roll. So when you press the record button, so I'm gonna press R right now, record. It gives you four beats into bar one. I find that very useful because um, if you have to start playing right away, it might get a little frantic if you have no lead up time. So that's how you start that. Um, for the metronome, uh, it, you can adjust the settings. There's other ways to do it, but this is how I do it. You, oops, you click right here, right click. So I right clicked on my mouse. Um, right now I have a set to click only while I'm recording because when I'm listening back to it, I don't want to hear the click. Uh, if you do want to hear the click while you are listening back, just press that down. That's it. Very easy. So right click again. Metronome settings. This is very important. Uh, depending on the tonality of your instrument, uh, you know, different tones of click or which is what you like to hear varies. For me, I like to have actually my tone uh, very, very high, a super high click because usually the cello notes are a little bit lower, so it's in a different frequency. Uh, and then just depending on the track, it really depends on how loud everything else is, I adjust the volume of the click this way. So you can kind of just play around with it. Um, you, there's also different you know, different options. I have polyphonic clicks, which it clicks uh, in a slightly different tone on bar, uh, uh, sorry, on beat one of each bar, just so it can keep you you know, uh, keep you in place in case you somehow forget because you're holding a really long note. Uh, so we have the metronome settings here. Again, I, it's not possible to go through every single thing in Logic. I don't think I even know how to use every single thing in Logic after all this time, um, but it's very good to experiment, play around with it a little bit um, and just see what it sounds like. Uh, and then after you take the time to do that, you will be all set and ready to go um, to make your own recordings at home or to do recording sessions with clients. Let me think uh, about something else okay how about importing audio so let me this is my dropbox again this is one of my own projects that uh for my album say okay so let's pretend this is from a client uh and they sent this to you okay so how do you import files now what i usually do is i just take it and drag it in to the very beginning 
Okay, that's easy, right? Done, the drums are there. All right, and then I'll take it and drag. The easier thing to do, uh, if you have a lot of tracks, you can just select both. Oops, sorry about that. You can select both or sit, pretend to select all four and just drag it in. Make sure, um, well, unless you've already created tracks for them for some reason, create new tracks, okay? And then you have all of those in here. Let me just delete, delete. All I did was press the delete button. I highlight and delete. Okay, and so now I have the audio files as well. So sometimes a composer will not send you any MIDI. So let's pretend we have no MIDI, guys. Uh, all we have is the audio. Um, I have a click track here, uh, some broken out stems. So we have a mix minus, which is everything except for the cello part. We have the drum parts, we have uh, the drones. And so you can adjust these here. This is the volume. You can also do it in other places, but for me, I just like to do it right here because it's easy to see. Um, this right here is panning left and right. If for some reason you want the audio to be uh, coming out with a stronger signal on the left or right, but for the most part, don't touch that. Um, just leave it, leave it, you know, center to, to start with. Um, so say you want to record on top of this. I don't know if you can hear this because it's coming through my headphones. La 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 la. <laughs> Okay, sorry guys, this is a little haphazard, but hopefully this makes sense. It gives you a very um, general overview of how uh, to use Logic. Uh, there's many, again, there's other things that you can do. Uh, sometimes people will um, also add in markers, like different notes. Uh, here are some tempo changes that you can see. But again, if you get the MIDI file, all of these will be embedded. So that's why it's best to ask for MIDI if the session is a little bit more complicated, if there's time, uh, time changes, time signature changes, tempo changes. Um, so yes, uh, sorry if I've gotten a little bit too detailed with this. Uh, there's just so much to talk about, but to, uh, on a very basic, basic level, this is how you record and how you um, can collaborate with others remotely. Okay guys, I hope that you found that a little bit helpful uh, to help get you started with setting up a home recording uh, setup. If you have any specific questions or requests, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I will most likely make another video that goes a little bit more in depth, maybe do a sample uh, for you guys of what a remote recording session with a client is like. Um, and if there's anything else, again, please leave me a comment, thumbs up, uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Please stay safe, stay home, stay busy to keep your mind off of the madness going on outside and try to take this opportunity um, to spend more time with your loved ones, to do the things that you've wanted to do but didn't have the time to do, um, to stay creative or just relax, watch TV, uh, whatever it is that makes you feel good. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys soon. Bye!